Hey guys and welcome to the vlog. Today's vlog I want to talk a little bit about pre-flight checks and some tests that I do with the drone um, before I put it up every single time. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that there's really no redundancy in the, in the aircraft. If something goes wrong um, it's going to fall out of the sky. So a few minutes of checks uh, looking for some obvious things can save you from quite an expensive crash. So let's get into it. So the first thing I do when I take the aircraft out of its bag, um, it doesn't matter how long it's been since the last flight, is I just take a quick visual check over the aircraft. So I check all of the props, that they unfold properly, that there's no play in the props. So you can see there, if I move this end, what you don't want to see is any play here where the joints are, um, where they could possibly be coming loose. So I go through and I check all four of the, the, the props there. Now the props themselves, I generally I run my hands down each individual blade and I've got some, some brand new ones here just to show you. What you're looking for is, is you can do a visual inspection but sometimes there are very very tiny irregularities if it's, if it's caught on something. So what I'm looking for is a very smooth blade. I want very smooth edges, I don't want to find any chips missing in the corners and I do this across every single blade on the aircraft. And that tells me if I find a tiny little nick in one of them, that it's had a, it's had a, an impact with something. So again, it might be a reason to, to change out your blade before you fly. I also make sure that the blades are connected properly. So with the Mavic, you actually push and twist to take the blades off. And again, so I make sure that they're fully connected, that they're locked in. And just generally go around and make sure that the blades are, are all in good condition and ready to fly. Now, I know it sounds like common sense, but to the number of people I've seen who just take it out, throw it in the air, and something as simple as a small nick in the blade can unbalance the aircraft. So uh, there's a possibility you might lose control. It may not fall out of the sky, but you don't want to be responsible for, for crashing it into somebody. Okay, next thing to check is the gimbal guard. So as you can see on behind the camera there, I have got my gimbal guard in place. Take this off before you power it up. Now the reason for that is when you power the aircraft up, this camera will go through a self-test. So it will go left and right and up and down. And if this is still connected, it will throw up some errors. So you want to make sure that you've got that off. I always actually put this into the bottom of my bag and I make a, a sort of mental note that have I taken the gimbal guard off, put it in before I press the power button. Okay, next thing to check is obviously your battery. So one press will show you how much battery you've got. And again, you, you don't have to have a full battery. I know people that say, oh, well, I'm only going to fly on if I've got a full battery. And they keep charging it up after sort of five minutes of use. Is I do like to run my batteries down. Um, there's no specific reason for it. Batteries these days don't have a memory. So you can charge them when they've only, you know, you've only used 5% of it. But generally, I want to make sure that I've got more than enough power for the flight that I'm intending to do. Generally, I try and keep my flight to under sort of half the full length of the battery. Obviously, if you're in the UK and you're complying with the drone code and you're not straying too far away, um, you shouldn't have any problems with getting too far away and not having enough battery power to come back. Remember, keeping it in visual sight. However, just check you've got a full battery or a battery that is a, a sufficiently charged for the flight that you want to do. The last thing I do is just a general quick look over the drone. I'm looking for wear and tear on the joints. I'm looking for damage or any foreign items like bits of twig or dirt that might have crept into the, into the motors there. I'm also going to take a look behind the camera. So behind here you can see there is an air intake. And obviously as the aircraft's flying it will suck air in here um, to cool the, the computer that's inside it. And there's another big heat sink here on the bottom. So again, just looking for any damage, anything that looks out of place. And then the last check, which is a little bit difficult to do, is to actually just check that the gimbal is correctly seated. Now there's a plate in the bottom here that's again, it's a little hard to see, but you just wanna make sure that all the things that are supposed to be connected underneath that are in place and so the gimbal's moving freely and there's no obstructions in there. Okay, and once you've done that, you're ready to go fly. So let's get the drone in the air and then I'll talk you through a couple of things that I do once the drone's flying. So one of the first things you should think about is where you're gonna launch the drone from. 
and is it the ideal surface to be launching from? So normally I would try and launch from some form of concrete or, or hard standing and that way nothing's going to interfere with the propellers. But if you're launching from grass you need to be careful about the grade because obviously the Mavic sits slightly backwards and obviously even with relatively short grass like this then you might get into some problems. Well if I'm launching from grass that's when I use a landing pad. So what I will do is take this out of the bag. You'll see there it springs open and it gives me a nice pad for the aircraft to land on. So as you can see, if we try to launch the Mavic from here, there is a danger that these back props um, are actually gonna end up cutting the grass. And again, any interference just adds extra strain onto the motors. So the landing pad solves that. We can sit the aircraft right in the middle of the landing pad and nothing's gonna interfere with it. Now, the other thing you should be aware of before you take off is obviously your surroundings. Um, so I have some trees, and these are quite tall trees, but actually I'm pretty familiar with this area, so I'm quite confident to take off in my garden. But be aware of others around you, especially dogs. Scoob's not too worried by the drone, um, but still, I won't I will have him sit quite this close when I take off. We'll get him a little further back and that way he, he won't get upset by it when it takes off. So you can see there, that's the, the camera going through its, its calibration as the aircraft gets ready. And that's everything done. It's now ready to fly. Okay, so we've checked our aircraft. We've made sure that there's no visible signs of damage and it's now time to get it in the air. So, one of the first things I do when I get the aircraft in the air is I just let it sit there. And the reason I let it sit there is I want the motors to get spun up. I want to make sure there's no nothing that's going to cause it to fail. So I just allow it to sit there for the first few seconds before I actually do anything with it. The next thing I'm going to do is just a series of quick maneuvers. I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to move it up and down. I'm not actually going to go very far, but I want to make sure that the drone's actually going to fly properly uh, that again, that there are no issues, and then once it's had a time to, to get used to being in the air, we'll set off. Scooby seems very interested in the drone today. Okay, so a couple of quick left and right spins just to make sure it's answering all its controls. Some back and forward again, not really moving too far. I just want to make sure that it's responding to back and forward. And again, some left and right. So we'll fly left, we'll fly right. And everything seems to be fine. So the last thing that I want to do just before I set off it's just to put it up, get some height on it. So I'm just going to bring it forward so it doesn't collide with the trees in front of me. And we're going to go up. And there we are. We're about 30 meters above the ground. And again, I'm just going to let it sit there for a few minutes. Okay, so we've concluded our flight. We're going to bring it into land. And sometimes this is where the, uh, the landing pad actually helps. You can see on the screen that I'm looking directly down with the camera. Landing. And there we go, we're back down. So again, once we're down, I just generally do the same checks that I did before I went for a flight. And that's purely just to check that there's no damage to the aircraft. Um, that way I can put it away knowing it's, it's all in good condition. Well, that's it for today's vlog. I hope you found it useful. If you're a novice pilot with a, with a Mavic or any other type of drone, these kind of checks really are just common sense and it means that you'll have a lot more fun flying your drone and hopefully you won't get into any trouble. If you have been, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.